Yeah. 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 Get comfy, pick a chair, a couple seats up front, comfy couch on the over here on my left. So, my name is Prahana Cannon and I'm the founder of iMedia Exposure. We're a social media marketing agency and we help businesses grow their company image and brand online using lots of free social media marketing. So, here's some shopping trends. We're in 2012 and a lot has changed since the 1980s and I know a lot of you in here have your own companies and have been in the industry for quite so many years. Um, does anyone in here use any of these different shopping trends or marketing trends to get clients right now? Donald, what do you use? Facebook? Does anyone use anything like direct mail or um, sales reps, things like that. No? So right now, social media is kind of the new trend in marketing. Everyone's using it. All the major companies are growing their business and having these online communities to really reach out to their target demographics. It's free, it's easy. You just need to figure out what works and what will be open to the listening of your target demographic. You know, word of mouth is perfect. I know I used Meetup to create this group, and that's pretty much word of mouth of Meetup. You see that your friends are going to this event. It's something of interest. You told your friends. I created a Facebook post. They told their friends. So even though it was online, it was still word of mouth marketing. So what is social media? It's free viral-based marketing. You put a message out there and it gets transmitted to the masses and then they have the availability to share your information. It's created a huge opportunity to communicate with your niche buyers. And unlike traditional marketing where it's interruption, like a commercial, you're watching a really great movie and it's just an interruption. And you're not listening, you're not into it, it's kind of an annoyance, you'd rather TiVo through it. Social media is marketing that people will search for. They'll go to the source and find that information. It's the new marketing. There's so many sites to choose from, and each person in their different industries will have a different demographic. We have the main social sites, but there's so many other ones that you can utilize that will be niche social sites that can work for your different product. And the key is to figure out what works best. Um, I could send you a list of all the sites if you'd like. Um, here's a picture of just a bunch of different ones. Okay. I mean, you can always look it up on Wikipedia. They have a full rundown of the sites. If you have a specific industry that you want to know what sites work best for that industry, you can send me um, a Facebook message at I'm Media Exposure and I'll get back to you. Could you share your uh, PowerPoint afterwards? Yeah, I can send it. So some of the reasons why people don't use social media, anyone in here? Do these resonate with anyone? How about time? You don't have enough time. You don't know where to start, it's overwhelming. You think it will take away from your privacy, you don't want to put all of your business out there for everyone to see. Or you don't know, you don't think it's financially beneficial. You know, you're an expert in your field, and you know you've done your sales, and you've been doing that for so many years, and it works. And you don't feel like it's going to work for your industry. Does anyone feel like that's them? No. So you guys are pretty open to it. Well, hence you're here. So this is kind of a chart. You want to involve your community and your clients, and create great information and content. You want to discuss. So if people have a question, you want to answer their questions. You want to discuss what's going on and what's trending in your industry. You want to promote anything that you're doing. If it's a new book or if it's a new ebook or an event or a new product launch, a new hire, a new person to your team. 
you want to measure your results always because we can spend five hours a day, you know, kind of hanging out on social media, checking out other people's pictures, but you want to really measure what if you're doing things that will reach to your demographic and if they're responding and if you're getting likes, if you're getting comments. And you can see these growing on all the different sites. So some of the objectives are building your email list, you know, so when we do have new offers and new products, you can send that to them. You want to drive the traffic to your sites. I know many people in here do sales directly from their site. You can contact, you know, the different departments in your company. There's better descriptions of what your products are through your website. So you want people to feel it necessary to find something really cool on your social site and drive them back to your website so that they purchase right there. Now you want to sell more products and services. That's why we're all in business, you know, promote ourselves and sell our products and services. Um, for events, you can increase your event registration by spreading it out to the masses and really getting them to be interested in registering and RSVPing and having contact. I know some people in here, I have the time to email and kind of have a little correspondence about the attendance of this event. You want to get media attention and contacts. So have posting really cool articles and hopefully it being read by somebody in the press or the media or having those people retweet your events or like your event. You want to connect with joint ventures. There's so many people in this room that have amazing products and we could all grow and make our business and products better by utilizing our network and having easy communication by connecting on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter and keeping a mass of what's trending and having that communication and that dialogue. You want to be an authority and an expert in your field. You want to put out great information so that if somebody has a question about your industry, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to their site because they have the greatest information and they will, sh if I have a question, they'll respond back to me. So you want to become that source. And it's great for improving customer service. People will give you negative responses as well as positive responses on your social media sites. Uh, there's a study that says 80% of people, if there is negative and positive um, reviews about you on social sites, they're more likely to buy and purchase from you, even if there's those negative. I mean, there can't only be negative, but if there's one or two complaints, but then there's 10, you know, saying, uh, posts saying that how amazing you are, 80% will purchase. Um, there's a video, a YouTube video of a FedEx um, delivery man. He threw a package into somebody's yard, and that was virally spread using YouTube and FedEx took that information and used it as a training tool saying that this is not what our company is about. Instead of hiding it or trying to deny it, they addressed it saying yes this did happen. But that's not what our company is about and we're willing to grow and learn and we're going to use this as a training on what not to do and there are going to be consequences for our sales staff. So taking any of those negative responses and flipping them and working them for your best interest. So passive income, we all want to sit at our homes and get people going to our sites and buying our products and services without us having to do anything. So establishing that and creating it, there's been 41% of deals closed from Facebook, 21% LinkedIn, and 20 with Twitter. How many people in this room have all three of these sites for their business? Okay. Do you have any information about the deal size? I could find out for you, I don't have that offhand. So these are the most popular social sites in this um, going on right now. So LinkedIn, 150 million users, great for businesses and networking. Twitter, it's short microblogs at 555 million. Facebook at 901 million, just Two months ago, it was at 850 million. And Google Plus, 170 million, and Pinterest, 20 million. Does everyone have all of these sites? No? Who's, uh, who's 
Well, Facebook has the biggest reach. Um, Pinterest is the new hot thing. Um, Instagram, also since it's been bought over by Facebook, is kind of doing more things and growing. I'll show you some more stats and you can kind of place your best after. <laughs> Um, I'll show you the demographics for age too. So these are the vi visitors per month. So they 700, well 7,000 visitors on Facebook a month. So that's people that log in and utilize Facebook each month. A lot of people have accounts and they may not go on it as frequently as some of the rest of us. Like I go on all day long. Um, Twitter, 800, uh, 182 million. Google Plus, 61 million. LinkedIn, 85. And Pinterest, 104. So they only started, what, eight months ago? And they have act and it's such a large active community, bigger than Google Plus. And do we, who in here Googles? I Google everything, any question, you know, Google it. So here's a uh, place your bets on this. I think that the amount of minutes per month that people use would kind of show you what's trending. You have the greatest opportunity to capture these people when they're online or when they're searching for information. Facebook, 405 minutes per month is an average. You know, there's people that spend 10 hours, 20 hours, and there's the people that go and check one picture or check their email really quick on there and log off. Pinterest, 405 minutes as well, and it's only an eight month old you know, site. LinkedIn, 21, and Google Plus, three minutes. I like to support Google Plus because it's part of Google's family. It's in combination with YouTube. You know, Google Places, you want to have a presence there. But since people don't spend that much time, only three minutes a month, your graphs of really promoting products isn't that big. It's great for getting articles or forming communities. You know, you can do Google Chat, and there's other options that you can have on there. You want to have a presence just because it's Google and they're such a powerhouse in the search engine. So when people are searching, you know, social media, I want to have a presence there for iMedia Exposure so that they can find me. You know, so for any of your companies, you want to have a presence there, even though they're trending well. So this is to your question, um, female versus male. It's basically kind of split 50-50. There's 60-40 Facebook, but it's Pinterest is focused more on women. There's a lot of crafts, home, food, clothing. But there are other companies that are growing and there are more masculine type things on there, more sports. Um, I've seen a bunch of racing, uh, car racing, boat racing, um, boards up there recently. And then this is by age group. So mostly the big majority is between 18 and 44, which is a pretty big group to focus on. And that's comparatively speaking between the different ages. Uh -huh. So, can you see? I can. So, what sets apart social media is that it's engagement. You can engage with your customers. Instead of having a newspaper ad, a direct mail, a TV commercial, a radio announcement, you can directly communicate with your customers and figure out what their likes and needs are, having their feedback, you know, posting a message to them, you know, tweeting to them, asking them a question on LinkedIn or sharing information. You get instant feedback. You create a community. And you want to provide valuable information for your community. You want to give them great contact and marketing. You know, you want to have information that promotes your company, but gives them some great information as well. You want to provide lots of tips, um, webinars, 
I have a webinar series that goes through all of the top social sites, and you know that just keeps me in communication with my demographic, and they get to learn, and I get to share with them. I'm having videos, so posting lots and lots of YouTube videos, having videos on your sites and your social sites. And YouTube videos will raise your ranking as well. So when you do label them, make sure that you have the right keywords in there. You want to have ebooks. So if you have a product or a service, you want to have an ebook describing that. You know, you can have a couple lines on your website, but is that really going to get to the core of your message? Is that really going to have your customer or your potential customers understand what you're providing? So you can sell those ebooks, you can give them out as white papers for free, you know, capture emails doing that as well, and take lots of photos. So any events, any products, any services, any team members, anything you do, have lots and lots of photos. Because we're all very visual. If you have a bunch of text on a page, people won't necessarily tune in. But if it has a little picture or a picture of something and then a description, people might click on it to learn more. And then reward your customers for participation. You want to make sure that you acknowledge your top fans on your site, the people that are always giving you great information, that are liking your photos. Acknowledge them, communicate with them, keep them loyal members. You know, if you have a restaurant and the manager comes over and asks you, you know, how was your meal? You know, here's my card. Next time you want to come in, I'll have some complimentary wine or complimentary dessert. More likely, you'll feel like, oh, that's my friends, or I know them, and you'll go in for a second, a second meal. Whereas if not, none of that happens, your meal was okay, and it, you forget about it. So you want to make sure you do things to incentivize your consumers. So here are some different ways to engage. You know, articles. Do we all have articles about our business out there that we created or that other people have created? You know, post those, have those. And this is a little small, so your blogs, your e-newsletters, have case studies of your clients and what you did for them and show people that you can do that for them as well. Show them what works and what didn't. Have in-person events like this. You know, do lots of videos we discussed before. Have white papers. Does everyone know what a white paper is? No? A white paper is, um, it could be one page or a couple pages, and it's just kind of like a little informational article, but more <laughs> bulleted, not like a, a letter, you know, describing your products or describing an industry trend, and you can give those out for free or you can, you can um, sell them. Usually PDF files so people can just read them. You want to have microsites, so microsites are technically in social sites, are your microsites, you can have your blogs, print magazine, traditional media, research reports, so these are all kind of things to get in there. There's ebooks, podcasts, so Facebook has 901 million users. Do you guys think it's important for us to be on there and have presence? Yes? Yes, for sure. The, this is a you know, a couple English speaking because I figure most of it, most of us in here are first language is English, so you can definitely target the U.S., the U.K., and Canada and sell your products online if you don't have a tangible good or if you want to ship o overseas. But there's a quite a large amount of English speakers, not considering the other countries as well, that are on Facebook that you can talk to. So you want to choose your demographics. You're not going to market to all of them. You're going to market to who would be open to listening to your product, who needs your product. You know, create reasons why they need your product. So for your Facebook, you can have your personal profile, and you can have your privacy settings. You can have subscribers, so you can put information on there that's public to your friends, to your acquaintances, to your close friends. And you can set groups, so if you want information to only be seen you know, to your family, you can create a group and have it labeled family, and only those people can see that information you put up there. So you can definitely monitor your privacy on there. And don't feel like you need to share everything. You know, keep it professional for when it goes to your business. Have some fun as well. Don't have it just strictly stats or information. Because you want to have a human feel. People want to do business with people. They don't want to do business with a company, you know. 
when you have a great experience with a salesperson or you know somebody that you're doing business with, you're more likely to remember them. You're more likely to refer them to your friends. And then for your company pages, have an active forum, create engagement with all of the, you can have games, sweet tests, sweet stakes, contests, photos, and you can create groups so your customers can be in a private group, and that can be, you know, something that you give if they sign up for your program they get to be in this private group and they get all of this great information and kind of keeps them special or you can have a, a larger community based group where people can invite whoever they want that would be interested in your expertise as well. So five guiding principles. You want to build a strategy that's social by design. So not just pouring out, hey buy me, here's my product. But having things that you'll get people to interact and communicate and feel like they're part of something. You want to have lots of pictures. Um, you can ask questions. I know there's times that I've asked questions about something random on Facebook. And people have responded back and have given me great information and helped me think out of the box for whatever the question it was that I had. Um, have lots of polls. So if you want to do market research, here's a perfect way to get some free market research from your demographics. Pull your customers and ask them what they want and what they need and how you can better serve them. You want to have lots of videos and do check-ins. So did everyone in here check in on Facebook or Foursquare saying that they're at market for iMedia exposure? Maria, a couple of you guys. So check in, you know. Have people check into your events. If they go to your office or they're at a store that is selling your product, have them check in, have them take a picture of your product. You know, you can run a, a contest that way. So whoever has the coolest check-in with a photo of the product, you know, gets a case shipped to their house. And you'll see all of that through Facebook because they'll mention you. You'll see all of that through Foursquare in your company info. And you want to nurture your relationships. So don't have people like you or follow you and then never respond to them or never communicate to them. You know, nurture your relationships and create that back and forth dialogue. Tag your photos in events. So if you do have events and you can tag businesses and people, some people have their accounts set to private where you, a company can't do that. But you know, have your personal settings on your business pages and all of that open so that anyone can tag you in your business. And keep learning. You know, there's a lot of you in here that I would love to learn more about because. You know, you're an expert in your field, and I can always learn more, and we can all grow together. So, Facebook timeline. Has everyone switched over to the timeline format yet? Hands? A couple of you guys know? Well, 60% more engagement with the timeline. And what's really great is that you get to have your logo, and you get to have a timeline cover photo. So, your logo will be your picture that goes where you post or tag or things of that nature. But your timeline really grabs the essence of your brand. So can anyone tell me this Coca-Cola image, what they get, what it means to them? Their cover photo? What, what does... On summer. Summertime? It's about life. Life. Fun. So what Coca-Cola was doing here? is showing that Coca-Cola is a life product. It's been through the timeline of most of our lives. And throughout their, their page, they have all the different events in history. There's a picture of Neil Armstrong with a Coke bottle. That was a time that was memorable for all of those who lived during that time, as well as all of us that didn't but know about it. And Coke, and Coke was there. And they have pictures. So if you have a product, show how you've improved on that product and the timeline of your product and where it started. And have this image of what you are. Like, you know, you see summertime, you see happy moments. So that's great things to think about when you're thinking of a Coke. So have your cover photo render up these images, these feelings of what you want people to feel when they think of your product and your image. You want to have great company info, so right there, you're going to have your about. So have a brief synopsis of what you are, your address, your phone number, ways to reach out to you, and your website. 
I know that some people will go and click info and read it, but you want to have that little blurb there, have your information, keep it easy. People don't want to have to search for the information. Have videos on your page, you know, of all your things. You can link your YouTube as one of your apps. You're allowed 12 applications. So right here, you'll be able to click that down and 12 of these boxes will come up. So use that as valuable tabs as this is your microsite on Facebook. Have, have pictures of your products. So if you're a service, take pictures of your service and something that you can write. So have your the product and the caption say what exactly it is and then add your website to the page where they can go so that full URL to the page that they'll go to learn more about your product or to purchase it if you don't have a Facebook store. So keep that website right there, have your caption so they don't have to go and search through your website. They can just click right there and if they did use their service or product, you know, have them comment on it and say how amazing it is. So have all those pictures and different albums. As well as having an album of your team members, your products, your services, um, any events, and your clients. You can do logos if they don't have pictures of them as well. You want to create ads, you know, have those Facebook ads. People do click on them, and if it's only just to see your image of your logo on the side of their page, have that there, you know, do a very low ad spend if you're not necessarily having a product to sell, if you just want people to come to your page and learn more about you, you know, do maybe $50 for two weeks or something, just so you get people to be clicking there and learning more about your product. Something that's new is offers, similar to like a Groupon or a Living Social kind of deal. Um, I'll get to that a little bit later. And then lists. So do people use lists on Twitter? Does anybody use Twitter lists? Yeah, back there. So what a list is, is you can do a social media list. So all of the you know, top people on social media, you can do a list there. Um, you can do an event planning list. So all of the top um, hotels, venues, you know, places to rent, you can do that list. And you want to add yourself to whatever industry you are to this list. And you want to train your community to go to this list to get all great information for these experts. And you want to put yourself in with all these other experts so people relate you with them. So this is Facebook offers. Um, on the status where you put your status update right over here, you'll click on offer and you know you click to that tab and then you can put, you know, for the month of May I'm going to do a free consult or I'm gonna do 10% off any service or free texting of your events. If you buy another package, have a photo there and that will stay on the top of your um, newsfeed as st the status on the top. So anyone that goes to your page, that will be the first thing they see as your status and you can promote your products like that. Once they do um, click on that, they'll be get, they'll be given an email sent to their email account that they have linked up with Facebook telling them the details and, and you will get information saying, hey, this person redeemed this deal. So you get to contact them directly and say, hey, you redeemed this deal, you get 20% off, or if it's a restaurant or something, they can show the deal on their phone and say, hey, I got 20% off, I redeemed this deal from Facebook. And Facebook doesn't charge for it, so you can put whatever deal you want up there, you know, $49 for the month of May, and they don't take a, a fee. And then whenever people redeem this, it shows up in their news feed as well. So all of their friends now see that they redeemed your deal. So another way to spread your name. So Twitter, how many people are on Twitter in here? So about half of you guys. So Twitter is an online social networking site. It's like microblogs. Um, you're only allowed 140 characters, and those are known as tweets. And you can network with your key influencers you can directly communicate with them. And it's pretty much one of the only sites that you'll have such a close connection with all of these key influencers. You may get retweeted from them, or they might add you as a mention in what they're talking about. You know, my mom um, retweeted something from 
Queen Rania of Jordan and then sent her a message, well, retweeted something about her and she retweeted my mom and responded to my mom, which is pretty phenomenal. The Queen of Jordan responded to my mom on Twitter. So that can definitely happen with key influencers in your demographics, you know, follow them, retweet them. You know, if they're asking a question or they have great information, respond to them and get that dialogue going. Have them notice you and network that way. 40% of people use it through their phone, you know, so wherever you are, just tweet something. It's short, it's 140 characters long. 70% of people use it outside of the United States, so you have the rest of the world to market to as well. And 50% use um, some other different social tools, such as Hootsuite, um, to spread the message, and you can put posts on that that will be sent out at different times. So you can regulate your messages like that. You don't have to be on there all the time. You want to use a recognizable brand name. So if your brand isn't taken, use that brand name on there. Get an avatar and that will be the picture. So you want to use your logo. And if you're the face of your brand, use your picture. If you're going to be the most recognizable thing, you don't want to change that for your company. For your personal page, you can change your picture as much as you want. But have that, your logo there, and or if it's your photo, keep it as a theme one. Um, and monitor your top influencers, so monitor what people are talking about. It's a great way to get news and see what's trending and talk about what's trending so that people follow you, they see that you're current. Um, don't follow people and unfollow them. That kind of resonates poorly for your business. Um, they'll think that's kind of a ploy and then you unfollow them. Don't use too many abbreviations because it seems unprofessional. Give credit when credit's due, so if somebody puts out great information, retweet them. You don't necessarily want to copy people's information, so retweet them. And be helpful. If somebody posts something and you have great information, even if it isn't about your company, share that information with them because they'll friend you, they'll, well, they'll follow you, they'll you know, feel like you're a human behind the company name. And if they do need your services when they're ready, they'll come to you because you created that communication with them. This is President Obama's page. He's, he's number three or two on Twitter, battling with Lady Gaga. <laughs> so you, you see his photo, you know who that is. It's his Im image, his logo. On the left, his campaign, Obama Biden. You know, have, don't have the plain picture that Twitter gives you. Specialize it for your business. If you want to have something fun and crazy for your personal thing, that's fine. But for your business, have it be in line and give information. You could have a picture on the left that has, you know, your website, your different other social sites I've seen as well. And then if you are a large corporation or you have an assistant that's going to be tweeting for you, Obama's his tags are, um, his posts are assigned BO. So if you are a larger uh, company and you want your assistant to do that, you yourself can have something like that, like you'll initial the tweet site you created and the rest of the people in your company can just post things as well. So if you're that expert, if you're that CEO, you can do it like that as well. And add pictures on that bottom bra, bra, uh, bar there. And if you use Instagram photos, they come up bigger and better than if you just directly put photos onto Twitter. So Instagram them and then tweet them. So Google Plus has 170 million users, and it integrates all of the social sites, uh, social tools on Google as well as their search tools. So their Google Profiles, Google Places, um, YouTube, all of those things, they're great for search rankings. You want to make sure you have a presence here. I mean, as we said before, only there's a very short amount of time that people spend on Google Plus. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your Google Plus launches. Um, and then circles, what circles are, are basically lists of different communities on Google Plus. Hangouts are kind of an uh, online hangout where you can invite people to talk about a certain topic. And then what's great about Google Plus is that it's connected with Google Analytics. So you get really great analytics whenever you post something, you can see what circles and how far it, the reach is, and all those analytics are right there in the site. 
So you can share your information and see the organization of this um, and utilize all your contents in your Google uh, email. And if you do have a company, like so mine's is Farhana at imediaexposure.com and you can put this through Google so that all those contacts go through Google as well as like your email user. And then create a business page on there too. Because when you do create a Google Plus page, you have to create it as a human being or Google will cut you off and not allow you to have your page. So remember that. Like don't try to put your company name as your name when you're doing it. Because they will notice and they will um, terminate your account. Yeah, you have to um, create the business page separately. So what Google Plus does is it makes you set up a Google uh, Gmail account. So you have to have a real person name. So if you have, if I wrote iMedia as my first name and Exposure as my second name, that clearly isn't my name. Like it's not a human name, so they'll recognize that. Yeah. Um, I did that actually, and I'm trying to figure out how to get out of it. I like to keep my account separate from my business. So, in other words, I have two businesses. I have my business, and then I have my, um, my other website. You can create a different email account. So, what's your business name? Uh, plant, the one that can't be closed, Planet Pals. Okay, so if planetpals at gmail.com is open. Well, I have that, but I can't go backwards now. Oh, okay. So, do Planet Pals dot like or dot co or co or something as your email, yeah. and then use all over. use yeah, and then use your name. Do I have to do a business account? No, you have to do a personal account and have it as a human name. So you can have your email as Planet Pals, whatever is open at Gmail, and then when you fill in your first and last name, use your real first and last name, and then. Post whatever information in your field as an expert, as your human being, as that expert in that field. And then from there, create a company page that would be for Planet Pals. And then you can do a separate thing for that. So it'll be different than your personal email as well. Okay, thank you. Isn't that true about Facebook too? Do you have to do everything under your personal account? Yeah. It's connected to your personal account, but it's a separate identity, so it doesn't necessarily. So and if anybody in this room likes I Media Exposure on Facebook, they'll see that I'm the page you know, owner. But if you click on my page, you won't be able to see anything that I put unless I put it as a public post. So it's still private. And you'll still have to friend me and still, you know, even if you liked my page. So it's very separate. Is that So, like I was saying before, Google Plus does reflect and affect search engines. So, if you take your YouTube videos, there are links to Google Plus. So, make sure any videos you put about your services, products, whatever, post them on your Google Plus and make them have really great taglines and headers. Because when somebody searches for those words, if you have it on YouTube and you put it through to Google Plus, it will rank very high. This is another way to just build your brands and have all those great customer analytics. So YouTube has 490 million users, and that's people that have actual accounts. And you don't have to have an account to see some things on, on YouTube. You know, if somebody posts something on Facebook, you can see that video, and you, nobody has to sign into any account. So that's just the people that actually have accounts, not including the millions of other people that just check out videos that their friends post. And you want to have videos of your products. So even if it is this projector, you know, do a cute little um, video. This is a projector. This is what it does. This is the specs. You know, have it there it's just so you have that video and it, it have your website on that video. And you know, maybe I'm I'm looking for a really nice projector and you have a nice pro uh, presentation on it. And so I'm like, oh, they seem nice. I like them. I'll buy it. Um, have it of all your services of all your events or take lots of video of all your events. You know, do clips. You don't want to necessarily do the whole event. And have lots of testimonials. So people that have been to your events or that have tried your products, take testimonials of them and videos and put them up there 
and fee have feedback with other videos too. So log into your account and if there's something specific to your industry, write a comment. You know, if there's a, a video on a way to clean your teeth and you're a dentist, you know, this is my office information and I do amazing cleaning that I do the best x-rays and you know whatever it is that you're trying to like teach people post that on different videos because that will also promote buzz and if I'm looking for teeth cleaning you know maybe I'm looking for a dentist too and YouTube really does bring your ranking up for your website so Pinterest is a new site this is what's new and hot New York Times says it's uh, the hottest new site, as well as a couple of other great publications. 20 million people, and it's only been around eight months. You get to connect with people that have similar likes and interests. You get to organize the things that you find. So it's a digital bulletin board, basically, and you get to share all this information. It's super viral. You get to connect with new customers. Does anybody have an interest account? They don't have business pages yet, but you can definitely promote your business through your personal Pinterest page. So this is my Pinterest page. It has a couple social media tabs on there, but it's mostly just things I like. You know, it's from, it's uh, Pinterest backslash iMedia Exposure. It's my name up there, and it has a little blurb about what I do. It has a couple little links there, and it just has really cool pictures. And for any pictures that you put up there, about your business or your product, have it linked to your website. So by that I mean, from your website, add a pin it button to your browser and pin every photo on your website. And if people see these photos, you know, write a caption, do hashtags of what these images are, um, have your website on there so that people can see your website, your company name, what the picture is about, and then once they click on this picture, so if I clicked on this photo and I clicked through to it, it would take me to the website that that photo came from. And have, it, have things that your community would be interested in too. So if you're a baker, or you have a bakery, you know, have all of your products, but then also have, you know, articles or, you know, things that people would be interested in, like candy bars or really cool restaurants, things that your community would like and refer back to you. So there's a couple of, um, like Better Homes has all images of things in their magazine and you can link right back to their magazine. You know, Home Depot has craft ideas. So they show you, you know, we want to make this poster here. So in a board, they'll show you the, the blue tape that you use to paint. They'll show you the right paint brushes and they'll create a board of everything you need to do to create this photo and give people step-by-steps -step and instructionals how to do that. So this also offers analytics. So when you link Google Analytics to each page on your website, you can see if they're coming from Pinterest. You know, it shows your activity on Facebook. So if people do repin your photos, that photo goes on their Facebook page. And if it's cool, People might click on it. It's another way to get more traffic to you. Add pin it buttons to your website. So if somebody goes to your website and they see something that they want to pin or share, you know, they can pin it right there. They don't have to add the pin it button on their toolbar. It's great for bank linking, as we discussed, because each picture goes directly to your site or whatever site you've taken the picture from. I suggest don't put pictures there that don't have a back end. Some people post pictures and they just uploaded a photo then it's not really great to get back end results. Um, and you use keywords when you're just using descriptions of the photos. Um, use words that people are looking for. So if you name something and it's a little bit too abstract for a typical search result, you know, make it what the average person would type to look for you. Um, create a brand channel. Have really cool pictures. Uh, don't focus on selling here. It's not about selling. It's just about showing people great photos. I mean, I bought things from Pinterest, like my friend had something really cool on their wall, and I was like, oh, I want that, and click through and purchased it. And it gives you a way to show off your products and services. So here's the growth. It's September 2011. This only stops at February, but 
its nominee, <coughs> and they have 20 million people. So this has phenomenal growth. And in February, 98 minutes were spent, and now it's up there with Facebook. Does anybody use Foursquare? Oh, want me to go back? I want to have you ask a Yeah. How many times is too much again? Yeah. Or at a time? Um, I'd probably do. Oh, she said, how many um, pictures are too much to pin in a day? I think that if you pin too much at one time, it's kind of overwhelming. So if somebody's following you on Pinterest, and they see all only pictures from you and not their other friends. I feel like when I, that happens to me, and it's only pictures from one person, it's a bit overwhelming. And I, I kind of I'm like, all right, enough with you. I want to see a diverse amount of photos. So I would say maybe ten at a time. Okay. Is there a tool for like you know like like um, is there a tool for um, getting it? No, not yet. I mean, they're fairly new, so they don't have a business page. They don't. Yeah, you can't schedule them through like Hootsuite or any of those other scheduling sites. So we'll have to wait to see what their progression is. And I have another question. Yeah. If you pin and then you repin that pin like on another day, let's look like I pin blog articles or whatever. And so if I'm repinning that article like next week, does that delete the first pin? No. It stays on. I delete the first pin. Oh, if yeah. you delete the link. If you okay, oh, so question. oh sorry. She said that if you pin something, say you pin an article on Monday, and then you delete that pin and repin it on Friday, does it delete the link? So if you delete it on your page, that's gone. But there's going to be other people that fill up that space on the feed anyways. So if you delete, if you post it on Monday and then you delete it and then you repin it on Friday, I would say deleting it on right before you repin it. Okay, what happens if, what happens if I have a pin and Elaine repins my pin? Oh, it won't delete. Then I repin it, I repin that same pin next week. Does that original one, does everybody lose the link? What she said is that, she said that if you pin something and then delete it, but her friend repinned it and then she deleted it, does the original erase the whole feed? And no, because if you, once it goes to somebody else, it's on their wall, so you can delete it. Like I could delete everything on my wall. And you know, if, even if I was the original person, those people that pinned it would still have that backlog, would still have those photos in their <laughs> um, different bulletin boards. Okay. Sometimes I've seen that message, error 505 or something, and, and there's nothing there when you click on a link. So exactly. I always wondered if that was why. I think sometimes um, that has to do with privacy issues. Um, Pinterest is new, and I think some companies don't see the benefit of having strangers promote their brands. Mm. They, you know, they feel like this is my photo. I paid, you know, photo bucket, you know, X, Y, and Z for this photo, and I don't want people to be taking my photo and using it, even though it's backlinking to their website. So I feel like that's kind of where the error goes. They communicate like, hey, people are taking my photo, and we don't want that. Or problems with the site or things like that. But the photos just did. Yeah, if they go on on that time where you repin, they'll see that post again. There's there's um things that I've pinned and then I've seen like two weeks later that random people that I don't know that didn't pin repin it for me, they might have repinned it from whoever repinned it for me, you know, that whole spectrum. So I'll see the same products and I'll see maybe one year there was dress and I pinned it like a month before and one of my friends reprinted for me, but then there was five of them on my feed. Yes? Is there a critical mass that you need to reach in terms of, you know, uh, get this amount of followers? Um, because I guess at some point it just gets viral and people start to follow you even though they don't know you. Um, 
just because you have high quality content on your website or your course or whatever. Have you, like, out of your experience, saying, okay, I reached out 100 followers or something, now we really started to take off? Do you, do you have, like, it kind of depends. Um, there's a photographer I know that has maybe 500 followers, but they have amazing, amazing photos. So those get spread upon like wildfire, but their, their photos are expensive. So they, you know, they run from 500 to like 5,000. So there's not that much. Uh, there's another lady that um, had maybe 350 followers and she made dog books and she had a website she wasn't really selling anything and then she made these dog books and photos of all these dogs she took them put them on Pinterest and she was doing sales for one day which she was doing a whole month so it kind of depends upon what your product is and when you do join Pinterest it will allow you to um, follow all of your Facebook friends that are on Pinterest. So do that, you know, follow all of your friends so that, you know, they'll probably follow you if they're your friend on Facebook, they'll probably follow you on Pinterest too. And you know, their community or whoever they're friending or following, they can kind of spread the word of your product. The statistics for exactly the number and the kind of pinpoint of this, it's still very new. So kind of, there's not been that much research on the sweet spot, and every product and target demographic is different, and your network is going to be different too. So how quick, you know, you're gonna, your friends are gonna disperse your information. Probably depends on the category as well. Right? Yeah, for sure. I guess weddings more popular than cars. Weddings are definitely very popular on Pinterest, um, more than cars. But there are things that are. I've seen a lot of car things now, a lot of outdoor sporting, a lot of climbing, a lot of health things. <laughs> I mean, you can start it and see how it goes. I mean, a lot of guys are getting on this now. I mean, every day I have a new one of my guy friends on Facebook. They're, they're like, oh, they're now following you. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So guys are getting on there, so there's more different gender interests on there. So who has Foursquare? Yes, Foursquare is awesome. If you don't have it, if you have a smartphone, you should definitely get it. It helps you find things if you're, say we're walking down the street in Boston and we're looking for where there's a happy hour or who has special appetizers, it's perfect to find that stuff. If you're looking for a nail salon, it's kind of like Yelp where you get the reviews of the places, but it also incorporates a coupon service. And you get to check in, take a photo, and write what you like about a place. So this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like on a phone and what it looks like on the actual screen. It'll give you a map so, and a directory of things in your area. And it will link you to your likes as well. So it will show you things you can click, you know, and say, what am I interested in? Or check out something new. And if you are there on a Sunday and you want to do something fun and interesting, it kind of helps you out with that. If you have a business and you want to promote a special, another way to do that, you can directly monitor who's checking in, you know, what they like, what they're doing. You know, if for a restaurant, if it, they're like, oh, this place has amazing wings, there's been times I've gone to restaurants or stores or nail salons and I check in, I get a discount, or I see, I'm like, oh, what should I order? And I see what's really cool on the menu that other people have loved. Um, to the left there it says check in with three of your friends and you'll get half price on ultimate wings. So that's encouraging people to bring people to your location. Um, does anybody in here have a physical, tangible location? So there's a couple people with offices and businesses that people can come to. So have them check in and write about, you know, if, if you're a service-based business and you have a corporate office, if somebody's coming in as your client, have them check in there and say, you know, I'm going in there to discuss this X, Y, and Z service, and it's going to be, you know, really great working with this person. I've had such a great experience as a testimonial. So Hootsuite, I was uh, discussing it earlier. You can add all of your feeds for your different social sites on here. So you don't individually have to go to Twitter or to 
Facebook to post things, and you can manage many different accounts. I think they give you five accounts that you can manage for free, and then after that, it's six ninety nine a month, and you can have a couple more accounts on there. So you can schedule your posts. You can do. I suggest doing them whatever market that you're reaching at nine o'clock. So when people are going to work or getting their day started at lunchtime, so around twelve o'clock, when people are you know taking their lunch, taking a break, and looking at their phone and getting to like have some time to respond. And then around six o'clock, when people are leaving and they're on their nightly commute, maybe on the train or the bus or something, and they get to look at their phones as well, and between 7 and 9 o'clock, um, that is the highest traffic time when people are on social like you know, they're, they're home and they are maybe checking up on their emails or their Facebook, seeing what's going on, maybe making plans for later in the evening or the week. So that's a great time to do them. You can schedule photos on all of your different sites. And I say posting the same thing on each of those methods. Uh, so somebody might like Facebook. Some but it might like Twitter or LinkedIn, and they might consistently go to those sites to get their information. So have each one of your posts go to all of those sites. And on the top browser, I don't know if you guys can really see from back there, but there's a space that allows you to put in the message, attach a photo, set the time, create a location if you want, and then choose all of the profiles that you want the links to go to. So here's a couple of goals that we want to get from social media. We want to foster product development. We always want to improve and see what the needs are of our consumer and innovate our company to fit those needs. You know, we always have to keep growing and moving so that we fit with our consumer. Um, you want to generate awareness about your products. If nobody knows about it or if only one group of people know about it, how many, are they, how many times are they going to actually purchase? You want the message to be spreading. Um, you want to have people know your brand and differentiate it from other brands and know that you provide great service, great consumer quality, um, and have a community for them and have them pick you over the others. You want to increase your traffic and increase your sales. I mean, that's definitely what we want to do from any of this marketing effort. You want to build your loyalty and deepen relationships. Um, and you want to increase referrals. You want other people to talk, be talking about you and referring business your way and gain insights. Are there any other goals that other people in here have that they want to get from using social media? Pretty much covers it. So who in here is ready to be making more money from using social media? Who in here is ready to be making more money? Yes, we all. So we know we need to have marketing. Is that a definitely yes? Everyone in here agrees we need marketing. You need to have strategy. You need to have a plan that you can implement. And you need to stick to that plan. And you need to track what's going on. You need to advertise what you're doing. You want to have more earnings. And you want to progress your brand. And you want to have a a plan of development on how you're going to do all this and keeping in line and what you're going to do each day to get to your goals. So we all know that this is what we need to do and this is what we want to do. So at IED Exposure, we have online social media marketing training and we use all of the top sites to show you how we'll go more in depth um, similar to this and we'll show you how you'll get the most out of your social media plan and we'll show you little tips and kind of methods on saving time and effort and energy using Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Foursquare. We'll get them to work to your unique demographics needs. We also offer coaching um, and it offers weekly plans of action and analytics. So graphs and information on what you're doing and how you can better it, reviews of your previous marketing and how we can tweak that both online and offline, and really creating a cohesive plan to work the two together and grow the business together. And it's we meet weekly, well, on Skype, not physically, unless we plan a little lunch break, 
but we have this interactive one hour, so we'll have a plan. You tell me what your essence of your brand is and what we're trying to capture and gather, and we'll create great marketing events and strategies to work this all together. So why do we want to do this? Well, 90% of purchases are subject to social influence. Isn't that pretty high that 90% of most purchases, like you want to hear what's going on from other people. One million plus companies have used Facebook as a business tool and a business page. And 30 billion predicted revenues for social commerce market in 2015. So we're 2012, this is only growing and getting better. And here's a couple more stats. You guys can all see it and read it. So 150 million people engage with Facebook on external websites each month. So that means that they're going to the Facebook page and linking back to your site or they're going on your site and linking back. So it's definitely important we need to create the right formula to grow the business that way. Here's what you'll get. You know, 85% of people using social media will get increased exposure. And if people know about you and know what you're doing, then that's great. You'll get more sales. You want that increased traffic, um, providing marketplace insight to generate leads, deepen loyal fans, improve search rankings, and growing business partnerships, reducing marketing expenses, you know, all these typical marketing tools such as commercials and newspapers and magazines and commercials, those are all quite expensive and you have this at your fingertips to really, if you use it in the right way, you can not have to do commercials or things of that nature or do them in conjunction and have the same message throughout and definitely improving sales. So we have a social media, um, it's called Social Media Decoding Webinar, and it is every Tuesday at eight o'clock in June. It's five days, and it covers Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Foursquare. And it's usually $397 for the five-day series. And today it's 197 so if anybody wants to sign up today, you'll get that discounted price. And you'll also get a pre and post consult. So I'll look over your social marketing right now and we'll see how we can grow and ways to improve. And then after the webinar, once you learn what you need to learn and you make all those adjustments, we'll do a post consult and kind of figure out a game plan moving forward. I also offer a social media coaching and that is one hour a week and we create a plan of action for each week. And we'll create online and offline events, so it's not just the social plan, but we'll create offline events and marketing so that we can tie them together and you can have one coherent um, game plan. And your results will be monitored so you'll get all those analytics and Suggestions for improvement will be given and the weekly hour calls and social monitoring and analytics. So if anyone's talking about your company or throughout the social sites, you know, we'll address that if it's good or bad and we'll utilize that information as well. And that's generally $2,500 a month and today it will be $14.99. And 10 tips for you guys to take home to get effective um, social followers is to funnel fans. So whatever site that you get them to, get them to all your different sites, funneling them by giving them incentives, creating free ebooks or white pages that they can download to get their email information. You know, giving them an incentive, inspiring engagement, so asking them really interesting questions and giving them you know, things for responding. So there's a lot of photo contests, taking the best photo with your products or your service and writing about that and whoever wins gets something. And people will respond to that. And mind your data, have like really great things and make sure that you're providing great information.
have product giveaways. If people sample your products, they might like it and put some pop chips on the back there. And you know, they gave away some products. You guys got to try them. There's some Vita Coco in the bags, as well as pop chips for you guys to take home. You know, partner with others. You know, they supported my event. I'm going to support their events. I would love to partner with some of you guys in here to work and grow and do some other great things. Involve bloggers. You know, they sit there all day long talking and reviewing different products and services and people. So involve them in your social plan as well and get them active. Hold offline events and tag your attendees in the photos. In front of your, your customers and run viral promotions. So all the great things that Facebook's offering right now. So I want to thank you guys all for coming out. Um, I ordered some apps on the back table, so I hope you guys will all interact with each other and see how we can all work together and help each other and grow. I'd love to meet all of you. I feel like I've talked to half of you so far, so enjoy the bar and the apps in the back. And if anyone has any questions, please come up here and let's chat.